Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. It's about lifestyle, so the choices we make every single day can and will determine the kind of health we're going to have tomorrow. We want to help you thrive, and we want to help you do well. We don't want to see you stuck. I don't want to see you stuck. I want to see you do well with whatever you deal with with your health and your life to really make it work well because really at the end of the day you want to thrive you want to really knock it out of the park in your health it doesn't matter if you got diabetes or heart disease arthritis fibromyalgia remember if the body can get sick it can also get well you can push yourself to the next level if you're willing to make it happen so those choices are determined by you no one else can take responsibility you got to put the sweat equity in but nobody wants to do that right but i know you do and at the end of the day, we want to help you do that. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Osteoporosis is a big topic. Now, of course, women face this more than men. But if you have some of the risk factors, which one of those being a postmenopausal woman, or if you're vitamin D deficient, guys can get this too. I've seen it a lot. So don't wait till you have the symptoms to get screened. This is what I always preach, right? This is prevention. Prevention is the key. Staying ahead of the game, knowing your numbers. You know, getting ahead of it so that you can give your body everything that it needs so you can thrive, crush it, and do well. So when you want to get screened, that's that's one of the big keys. So here's some of the basics to get screened for bone loss, all right? So women over the age of 65, women who have had more than one risk factor, for example, a family history of osteoporosis or low body weight other than being Caucasian or post uh, past menopause. Postmenopause women who've had a fracture, that's a big deal. And since bone loss begins without noticeable symptoms, screening should ideally occur before you have reason to worry. Now, fracture, most common early osteoporosis symptom is fracture. So you may have a fragility-related fracture before you're diagnosed with bone loss or osteoporosis. And it means your wrist, back, hip, or other bone is fractured as a result of mild to moderate trauma, like falling, you know, falling, taking a, a quick fall, whatever it is. And if you experience a kind of fracture and you're over 50, you want to talk to your doctor about bone loss and what the issue is with that. A study of 127 people who had fragility-related fractures showed that only 17% thought their fracture could be related to osteoporosis and fewer than half believed they were at increased risk for another fracture. Even having one fracture significantly increases the risk of later fractures. And osteoporosis was diagnosed in 44% of these patients. That they looked at. That's amazing. Think about that. So if you hear some basic signs, any of these, if you haven't had a fracture of any kind, this could show that you're setting up for that. Okay? So high levels of serum calcium or alkaline phosphatate in a, phosphatase in a blood test. And, and again, if you're over age 35, you need to be having a blood test done every six months. Okay? It's not excess. It's important. You've got to get it done. It's vital. You, you've got to do it. All right? Next, vitamin D deficiency is a big one. Okay, difficulty getting up from a chair without using your arms to push is very noticeable and extremely important to notice. Joint or muscle aches, okay, a resting pulse greater than 80 beats per minute, height loss, increased stooping, which is curvature of the spine, all those are very important, and you got to have those checked out on a regular basis. These symptoms can indicate other health issues as well. So it's important to talk to your doctor and make sure they get an accurate diagnosis and a good treatment plan. So you might wonder also if you've experienced a fragility-related fracture. Sometimes they're obvious, and you'll experience pain and swelling immediately after a fall or impact. At other times, you may feel pain, like your back, not able to trace to a single event, but just kind of aches, and that's very common as well. That's why nutritional deficiencies, vitamin D, other minerals can be affected and can be really making an impact in your overall health and you want to get those looked at as, as soon as possible. It really does. It makes a big, big difference overall. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Lines are open. Questions about your health, you can give us a call. Or go to the website. And that's the key. And if you're looking for a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes the same way we do. All this nutrition and lifestyle based care we talk about, just go to the website, you can easily find it there and it can make a big difference in your overall health and your life. Let's get to the phones. Remember, you can always call us 
at the number. Let's go to the phones. Wanda. Hi, Wanda. Um, I was calling in regards to a fibro granular mass in my right breast. Um, mm-hmm. And I've been having trouble with lymph nodes in my left armpit, swollen. And the doctor wants now send me to a hematologist because my blood count is elevated. Okay. So one of the keys with the with the mass, the, this mass you're talking about, it, they're usually benign. All right, so that's the good news. All right, these these masses are usually benign, and and that's good news, right? So, but you still want to go to the hematologist. I think it's a good idea to figure out exactly what they are going to say. An opinion like that with high, the high level of a specialist is important because one of the biggest things in medicine is to rule out what you don't have. Okay, that's one of the big keys. You want to rule out where the body's doing well and and you know what it's doing what it's not doing you want to give make sure the body's getting everything that it needs so it can thrive and function at its best level but you got to determine that you want to pinpoint that that's that's a big deal and then another piece too that's vitally important is to make sure and this is this is important okay once you get that opinion then you got to have a game plan to go with it so it's one thing to have knowledge like that, but you've got to have a day-to-day routine that's extremely important and that, that keeps you on top of your game. And that's why you want to do everything you can with that information and then start you know, bucking up on your own self to make sure you're eating the right kind of foods, cutting down inflammatory-based foods, that you are getting yourself into a position that you can do better. And that's what we want to see you do in, in a great way is – is to live better and do better and make it happen. So that's a big key. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Give us a call or go to the website. The key neighborhood factor that can help smokers quit the inconvenience of having to walk further to the nearest cigarette vendor might be enough to help smokers quit. And researchers in Finland tracked down on about twenty one thousand current and former smokers. And the investigators want to see how the changes in walking distance from home to nearest tobacco could affect smoking behavior. The result, every one-third of a mile the smoker had to walk, and there was 20 to 60% increase for his or her odds of quitting habit to the, st- the study found. So the good news is when you make it difficult to get the cigarettes, it can cut down on, because we're kind of, you know people are a little bit lazy by nature, it'll cut down on your ability to be smoking. And that is... A big deal. So having to drive farther away <laughs> or having to walk to get your cigarettes probably would cut down on people actually doing the smoking. Interesting, that's for sure. I wish people would just quit in general. That would be fantastic. That's one of the toughest habits for sure. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two you're If you're looking for increased strength, increased endurance, and better recovery, then look no further than an all-natural nutritional supplement called creatine hydrochloride. Concrete is the brand, and it's the most absorbable form of creatine hydrochloride found today. Now, creatine is not just for athletes. You've probably heard that before, but concrete, creatine hydrochloride, is for the everyday person looking to improve their health. Listen, I started taking creatine in college when I was a strength conditioning coach at Florida State University. And I've taken it ever since my college years. And it's made a massive difference in my life. Everything in my body, I believe, is functioning better because of creatine. Creatine hydrochloride I've moved over to using concrete. And it is the best form of creatine on the market. Concrete creatine hydrochloride is available at most Walmart stores and on Walmart.com or any store that carries nutritional supplements. Just make sure to look for concrete brand creatine hydrochloride and watch your endurance your strength and your recovery and your immune system get boosted today to find out more connect with on call radio online at inshapenetwork.com
just like we do. All this nutrition and lifestyle-based care we talk about, go to the website. Or If you're ever in Atlanta or down in Florida, any of our Center for Lifestyle Medicine clinics, we'd love to have you come by. Make sure you stop by and say hello. Of course, take all the insurance and everything out there. So, But we'd love to have you just come by and say hello anytime. Be good to see you. our doctors, staff. We've got great team members, and we'd love to love to have you pop in anytime. That's what we're here for. You're not going to believe this. Cancer is now the leading killer in 12 European nations. Cancer has overtaken heart disease and stroke as the leading cause of death in 12 European countries. Now, this, you know, of course, for the most part, heart disease is the number one killer, okay, especially in America but a- across the, the world. However, cardiovascular disease, heart disease, and stroke is still the leading cause, okay, worldwide. But in the 53 countries defined as a European region by the World Health Organization, heart disease killed more than four people in 2016. The deaths accounted for 45% of all deaths in the nations. Cancer accounted for less than half the number of deaths from heart disease in Europe as a whole, researchers said. However, success in preventing and treating heart disease seems to have led large declines in heart disease deaths in a number of countries. Cancer now kills more men than heart disease in these 12 countries. So here they are, okay? So Belgium, Denmark, France, Israel, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Slovenia, Spain, and the United Kingdom, and Luxembourg, okay? So the study found that cancer now kills more women than heart disease in Denmark and Israel. Pretty amazing. Our lifestyle is everything. It really is. Now, another thing about cancer is that a big piece of it has to do with our environment and our food choices, the chemicals in the foods. Air quality is another big one, okay, because lung cancer is the number one killer. I don't know if you knew that. But lung cancer, out of all of them, like we hear about breast and prostate, colon and all that, you hear about all that a lot. And it, those are the ones that we talk about. They're kind of the ones that are more popular to talk about. But, the, I mean, the average person, the most leading killer of all cancers is lung cancer by like 34%. It's definitely the head honcho, that's for sure. But the countries where, where, where cancer caused more death than heart disease were all found in Western Europe. So you got to wonder what's going on in Western Europe. Is it the habits? Is it the water supplies? Is it the air quality? Is it toxins in a certain area? What's causing that? Something is. It's not just genetics. I'll tell you that. Environment is a big piece. And so you got you know, the key is why? And why is that happening? And I hope somebody does some research on that to figure out, and I'm sure they are. Currently, but that's a big, big deal. We don't want to do everything we can to begin to thrive in our health and not just barely make it. We want to do well. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Lines are open. Give us a call or go to the website. Let's get to the phones and talk to Ken. Hi, Ken. Yeah, hi. I'd like to comment on um, the smoking, the quit smoking segment he was just talking about. Sure. Um, you know, there are tools out there that give people the power to walk away. And uh, one of them is a book that I read called The Alan Carr, uh, The Easy Way to Stop Smoking. And I think part of the mythology of smoking is this notion that it's the hardest thing on earth to quit. And I would argue at that point that it's not the hardest thing to quit when you decide. Um, I think tobacco companies want us to think it's harder than heroin and all that stuff. You've heard those it's three days of irritability, basically, and there are tools out there. Uh, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Well, there are a couple of tools out there that, that work really well. It is one of the is known as the toughest habit. It just depends on the person. And you know, I've seen people that that have been given a diagnosis. It was enough to scare them, and they quit cold turkey. I've seen plenty of people quit cold turkey and walked away like it was nothing. And didn't have the three days of, of misery and all that. Like they were so made up in their mind that, that it's almost like they just shut it all down and that was it. And so there, there's a lot that can be done with, with smoking. And, and, and it is. It's a made up mind, number one. That's the first thing. And, and people don't want it bad enough, badly enough to quit. They don't want to give it up. They, they, they struggle with it. And they really want to get into a place where they, where they can just kind of stay in it. And that's that's a that's a challenging place to be, but some alternative methods outside of the medications. I mean, there's Chantix, 
uh, and Wellbutrin, which is a, a, an antidepressant medication. But there, there are those that can help. But at the end of the day, I like acupuncture. Acupuncture is one of my favorites. Now you can do cognitive therapy as well, but I really, really like the the acupuncture. I think there's a little clip that they put on the ear and and stimulate the acupuncture point for addictive uh, type issues, especially with smoking. It is phenomenal and it does great and it makes a difference and it can help the body in in a huge way. So I see people overcome it with that all the time. But it, no matter what you do and no matter what you choose. It's, it's got to be in a place where you decide that, that that's it. That no more. It has to be in a place where, where somebody decides that that, you know, I'm done. And that that's, there's no more. I'm not going to deal with this anymore. Uh, it, it's vital that that takes place because you have to understand that your habits are determined by your own choices. Right? So we can say, Oh, they're going to, they're going to have a hard time. Mm, yeah. If you want to have a hard time, if you're not made up, somebody else is telling you you need to quit. If you're not made up in your mind, then yeah, it will be tough. So that's the, that's the, you are right. It's a great, great thought what you're bringing to the table because at, at the end of the day, it's, it's not that tough if you want it, but that's the ultimate question. That's the question on the cover of my book that, that was a bestseller and that is a bestseller still is that, do you want to get well? Do you want it? That's the question. It doesn't matter if it's heart disease, smoking, depression, being overweight or obese. doesn't matter what it is. Do you want it? Do you want to get well? And when you decide that you want it, and when you decide that you're willing to do whatever it takes, then that's when you'll find exactly what you're looking for, and that's when you'll find everything you need to thrive, be successful, and do well. 888 283 7272. Give us a call. 888 283 7272. Want to turn back the clock 15 years and have more energy? This is Dr. Rasa telling you to just breathe with LiveO2. LiveO2 delivers the right amount of oxygen we need for optimal health. Go to LiveO2.com. That's LiveO2.com. To find out more, visit the show online, InShapeNetwork.com. Check us out on the web. ADHD is called Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. And it's common among college students who misuse stimulant drugs. Matter of fact, a lot of college students will just ask or, or act like they have the diagnosis to get the drugs because it helps them study so much better. College students who misuse stimulant drugs are more likely to have attention deficit disorder, though. So if they overuse caffeine, if they overuse any kind of recreational stimulant type drug, they can end up having... ADHD or psychiatric issues, a new study shows. So the study also found that, that stimulants that are immediate release are more likely to be misused than extended release versions of the drug. So a previous study found that two-thirds of college students have been offered stimulants for non-medical use, and 31% had used in over a four-year period. The Massachusetts General Hospital included 300 undergraduates between the age of 18 and 28 in Boston campuses. And about a third misused stimulant drugs. Misusers were more likely to have been diagnosed with ADHD or to have related symptoms as children, such as being easily distracted or having trouble paying attention. Adults, they were more likely to have trouble following instructions and a dislike task that required focus. That's a big one. Study was published recently in the journal Clinical Psychiatry, and the data suggests that college students who misuse prescription stimulant medications are more likely to exhibit clinically relevant psychiatric dysfunction. And Dr. Timothy Wylands said in a hospital news release, not everyone who used the drugs used them to get high. Some used for actual better performance and under the doctor's supervision and whatnot. So these medications can affect the, the, the brain in a good way. But again, you want to make sure that if you, if you do have ADHD or if you do have a focus challenge that you, you get to a physician that can work with you, that understands 
the biochemistry of it that can monitor you because there's blood tests that needs to be done and there's certain monitoring that needs to be done to make sure you're okay and stable and ready for that and can handle it. So that's one of the biggest issues that you have to look at with something like this. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Give us a call or go to the website. If you're looking for a lifestyle provider in your area that believes the same way we do, all this nutrition and lifestyle-based care we talk about, you can go to the website, easily find that. We can help you get someone in your area that can make a difference in your health and in your life. That is what it's all about. Let's get to Lisa on the phones. Hi, Lisa. I just want to know, is Weight Watcher food good for you? Should you uh, plan your uh, meals and menu around Weight Watchers? Is that a good product to use uh, to lose weight or to stay on track with your weight? Well, I think a lot of the different companies out there have have some good programs and good routines i think people have their strengths and they have their weaknesses and something that we've developed over the years that's one of our mainstays at in shape university in shape university is is pretty much a, an overall system that'll take you from where you are to where you want to be with your health your your weight goals and everything else so many times we pursue weight and if that's a pursuit, a lot of times you're never, you really are not going to hit your long-term goals because if you pursue health, the body that you want will follow. So you have to pursue health first and you have to go after it. Health needs to be the, the, the biggest piece of, of what you're looking for. I mean, that has to be the number one driver, uh, in, in the whole, the whole deal. And so one of the keys that you have to look at is, and this is, it, it's important because the other companies are, they, they have some good systems, but you want to make sure you're doing whole, whole foods, whole base foods. Okay. And lean quality proteins. You want to do low glycemic carbohydrates, form of fruits and vegetables, healthy fats. You got to know when to eat the foods in what portion and what amount, which is what a lot of them do. But you also want to know your blood work numbers. And they'll all say check with your doctor and all that. But then the doctor's not really checking nutritional deficiencies. They're just checking some of the basics. And if you're just checking the basics, you're not really going to get a good read on what's actually happening with you. And if if that's the case, then if your body is, say, got an estrogen issue or if you're dealing with, say, testosterone issues as a guy and you're trying to lose Belly fat, that's not going to happen if your testosterone is low. And if you're eating a diet that's not going to improve testosterone levels, then that's a whole different animal as well. And so all of that is kind of, really it's kind of put together. And that's why you've got to have a system like In Shape University that really puts it all together. And what we feel is is you know, doctor developed and, and put together in a system that's clinically researched that can produce great results and that's that's what it's all about you want to have the results that you're looking for you don't want to be stuck because weight is important but health is the ultimate and that's what you want to shoot for that's your ultimate goal if you pursue health the body that you want will follow and that's just the way that it works and it's pretty simple along those lines triple eight two eight three seven two seven two that's triple eight Two eight three seven two seven two lines are open with questions about your health. You can give us a call or go to the website. A lot of people want to know how can I catch your show at other times of the day. Well, our app is out, so if you haven't checked out the app, it's on all the Apple products, right? iPads and iPhones and all of that. It's in the Apple Store. You can check out. Just look for that app. And you can easily download it. The cool thing about it is you can listen to the show whenever you want on your time. So it plays the show from the day before all the way through the the next day. And it will play and, and repeat the content, stream it, and run it. And that makes a big difference for you. That way you can do it on your time, in your way, the way you want to. And that's a big key. So we want to help you. No matter what you're dealing with, we want to be a support to you, help you, make you go to the next level, help you go to the next level. That's what this whole thing is about. Well, there's a lot of healthy foods that can increase our energy, and energy seems to be a, a big topic lately. I get a lot of 
emails and calls about it, people just not having the energy they need to go through the day to do the typical things that they do and and to to really achieve their goals and 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 really hit their hit what they want for family, for work, for their fitness goals, whatever it is. And so finding that energy and building that energy level really can make a big difference. So a couple of things to think about when you're wanting to to really hit those. Number one is, are you eating the right kind of foods throughout the day? It's not just, are you eating at all, but are you eating the right kind of foods? That's number one. And then exercise is another big key. If you're not exercising, your energy levels are going to be down. There are more studies about increasing of energy than just about anything else. So getting the right amount of exercise, even if it's just 10 minutes a day, is enough to make a difference. Then the other piece that's important that I would look at is also your rest patterns. Are you resting well? If you're not getting into a deep stage of sleep at night, then that could be a little bit of a challenge too. So you got to look at that. All that kind of thing is important to get your body where it needs to be and and to get it to thrive. So let's talk about some foods that can boost your energy levels. All right, that'll be some help for you that you can take away. Number one are almonds. They're a standout food without a doubt. They've got uh, magnesium, which we're typically very deficient in, and the B vitamins, which help convert food to energy. Research shows that people with low magnesium levels tend to tire more quickly during exercise due to magnesium's role in energy metabolism. And the author of uh, Boosting Your Metabolism for Dummies, the director of nutrition at Calorie Count, insufficient B vitamins can lead to fatigue, irritability, and poor concentration. So getting your B vitamins out of a lot of your, your leafy green vegetables and getting your magnesium out of your foods as well can make a big difference. The next one is salmon, which it isn't called the brain food for nothing. Salmon owes its moniker to omega-3 fatty acid nutrients that have been around to improve memory and reduce depression as well as boost energy and mood. According to a review of brain foods in the Journal of Nature Review Sciences, it's just like salmon, the omega-3 fatty acids that go along with other nutrients, salmon's also a rich source of protein, which can promote muscle building and can keep the body functioning at its best. So it's a good level of protein, but it's just a great source all the way around for the brain because you got your omega-3s in there. Bananas are really good too. Make sure you eat them more on the green side than you do anything else. But they're loaded with fiber, B vitamins, and potassium, and nutrients that promote sustained energy and muscle function. So bananas are particularly appealing as a pre- or post-workout snack. You can pair a banana with a glass of low-fat milk or a cup of yogurt for an energizing combination of fiber and protein that does very well. And again, great, great combination to really get your day started. Kale's another good one. It's a superfood, hands down. It can boost your energy levels in a great way. Kale contains amino acid L-tyrosine, which can help give you a mental lift, as well as a number of antioxidants to fill you up and keep your blood sugar stable. Hummus is another one. Got a Mediterranean dip, a few simple ingredients, and contributes nutrients for energy. It's one of my favorites. I I love a huge hummus guy. Eat it all the time. Fiber and protein with the beans, stabilize blood sugar, take off the edge of hunger, and boost energy. And then Greek yogurt. It's a good one. And it's, you know, again, some people don't like dairy, and it's organic. Make sure you get the organic version. But it's got it's it's good. It's a quick snack, and you can throw some mixed nuts in there, some berries, and it gives you plenty of protein for a small snack, and then of course, it's got probiotics in it, which is why I love it. Now, cow's milk dairy, some people don't handle it very well, but at the end of the day, there's been a lot of studies about how dairy products can help increase the fat burning process, and that is a big deal for a lot of folks. So it can be a good snack. 888-283-7272. Coming up, got some anti-aging tips you don't want to miss. Are you ready to chow? It's time for Keto Chow. When it comes to eating healthy, the keto diet has become one of the nutrition leaders in optimizing health, losing unwanted weight, and reaching your health and wellness goals. No extravagant cooking, no long kitchen cleanup, and most importantly, especially for me, it's convenient. Just put quality keto chow powder in a bottle, add some heavy whipping cream or your favorite fat, a little water, and boom, shake it up and you're ready to chow. Keto chow tastes amazing. So make keto chow easy for you and your family today with keto chow. Let's go chow. Visit keto chow online at keto chow.xyz. That's keto chow.xyz.
Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. Welcome back to the show. Remember, I don't want you to really lose hope when it comes to your health. That's the one area that I want to see you thrive in. That's the one area that that I really want to see you do well in. And your health is your greatest wealth. And no one can take responsibility for your health but you. Okay? Only you can take responsibility. And at the end of the day, there's a lot of people that struggle and they don't really have answers. But here in this show, we want to be able to give you answers, to be able to do better than you ever did before, to thrive, to make it, to know that you can, to know that you don't have to be stuck, and to know that there's a better way. We want to make that better for you so you can really go out and live the life that you were designed to live, so you can live better, feel better, have the energy that you're looking for, and do well. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Drinking more water can really help with kidney stones, okay, the risk of kidney stones. So there's been some studies that have come out, and the American College of Physicians now advise kidney stone patients to drink at least two liters of water or other fluids a day. It's been shown that drinking more fluids can reduce the risk of recurring kidney stones almost by half. So drinking more water and cutting back on the soft drinks among recommendations in the guidelines can help reduce the risk of kidney stones in people who are prone to development, developing them. The reason is the water is supposed to be helpful. It's a mechanically flushing process that stone fragments can pass and so that the urine doesn't have sediment in the kidney and collect. And Dr. Elizabeth Cavalier, who's a urologist in the Lenox Hospital, said, however, kidney stone patients should try to avoid soft drinks, which have ingredients that can be major factors in the formation of the kidney stones. The guidelines also recommended changes in eating habits, including less red meat, foods high in dietary oxalates, such as chocolate nuts, beets, and leafy greens. Doesn't that sound like not fun? Those are great foods. But it is. It's a big deal. Some people don't have the uh, the enzyme to break down the oxalic acid, and that's very, very common. More common than you think, and there's some genetic conditions with that, too. So, again, you just pick different foods, right? So if you, if you like those kind of foods, you just go with some different ones so that you don't – or you just eat those sparingly. It's not like you got to eliminate them forever, but you can eat them sparingly, and then that, that can help um, for the long term. You just – you want to do everything you can to avoid irritating the system because at the end of the day, you you want to do everything you can to make good choices. And one of the big deals – when it comes down to it, kidney stones, they're no fun. Not at all. Alternative therapies are out there for it if you have kidney stones. I mean, there's there's some different thoughts and, and different ways of doing that. One thing, of course, with kidney stones is is avoiding, di- doing the avoidance of the dietary foods. But the other thing that's important to look at is on, on the kidney stone side is is to make sure you avoid too much tea. A lot of tea, black tea specifically, can be a root cause of that. So your fluid intake, when they say water, they mean water. And that really does make a big difference. 888 Lines are open. You can give me a call or go to the website. Let's go to Martin on the phones. Hi, Martin. I'm calling to ask about what can a person do or where can they go if they're dealing with low vision? The person has glycoma and she is a diabetic but her diabetes are under control her glycoma seems to be doing okay the pressure in her eye is pretty decent uh 12 in one eye and 19 in the other eye but she still has low vision i want to know where do we go to have her low vision checked. I'm not really that confident in the doctors that she's dealing with at this moment. Well, one of the keys, and again, I understand you don't feel confident, but but many times the doctors are doing everything that they, they feel is necessary. 
and they're they're making the best choices that they can. So you want to encourage them. If you want to get more doctors on the team, that's a great idea too. I always think there's great wisdom in having a lot of counsel. So that's one of the one of the main factors you've got to look at. Now, one of the pieces you definitely want to jump in and look at overall is to to really jump in and say, okay, what can be done nutritionally? And if the eating habits are not right, if there's no balance between equal amounts of lean protein sources, you know, like chicken, fish, beef, or eggs, if she's just kind of blowing her diet off and it's no big thought, then yeah, there's going to be an issue. When diabetes is under control. I'm assuming that's under control with the medicine, which doesn't mean anything to me. Okay, You tell me blood pressure and all that's under control. What does that mean? It means that you've done nothing, but the medicine's done everything. It means that your habits are still the same or her habits are still the same, and that means nothing. So you got to get to a place where she has modified her lifestyle to the point where her habits have gotten the, the – uh, the condition under control and then the doctor said gosh you're doing so great that we just don't even need the medicine anymore see that's where you want to be so typically there's a lot of issues with vitamin a there is there's issues with omega-3 fatty acids severe deficiency in omega-3 fatty acids that can be a, a real big cause of a lot of this so getting that under control can make a big difference and you want to do that overall uh, throughout the day and, and that's one of the big challenges you've got to you got to figure out at the end of the day what your what are what her goals are and it just comes down to more or less than lifestyle habits all the way around because glaucoma there's drops you can put in them but if, if the if the omega-3 fatty acids are low that's one of the big ones puts another hour in the charts i want to thank our producer jay patrick engineer john garrison and the rest of the team go tell one person something you learned on the show together We can transform the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. You're listening to the show that helps you get well, stay well, and live well. Did you know you could listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over, but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the Asa RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.